Hi you guys, I am back with another December daily process video. Today is all about going ice skating. My boyfriend and I finally made time to go ice skating, which I had been wanting to do for a long time. And we just went to a mall nearby that has an ice skating rink year round. We consider going to this hotel that does like a ice skating rink on the beach during December, but I had been in the year before a couple years ago and it's very expensive. It's a really small rink and it's just kind of like not as fun as it would be if they didn't like oversell it, I guess. So we decided to go to this rink. It's closer by. It was cheaper and it was much bigger and like more fun for the actual ice skating part of it. So we went and my boyfriend was never good at ice skating growing up or whatever, but we recently got into roller skating together, and so he's gotten a lot better at roller skating, so now he's a lot better at ice skating. So he had a really, really good time and has, like, since been wanting to go back. So I've always loved ice skating. I ice skated a little bit as a kid, so I definitely feel comfortable on ice. But anyways, for the photos, I have three little 3 by 4 photos, and I have all of these plastic, like, Polaroid frames from Ali Edwards. They're from various kits that I bought like on sale because they were kind of older and I'm just using some score tape to adhere them to the top of the photo and then I trim off the excess of like the plastic frame or the photo or whatever needs to be trimmed and then I adhere it to the bottom and I just think it's a cute little way of I don't know making the photos feel a little bit more substantial a little bit more special and I'm actually going to be using the foundation page that you see on the right it's a little pocket that I made and I really love it. I love the colors and I just really like the way that it came out. I think that when I did the process for this foundation page, I didn't add that silver star trim onto it in the actual process. That's the only thing I've done like off camera, I suppose. But I really like the way this page came out. And so what I end up doing is creating like a pull out flip kind of thing, like a strip of photo flip. That was kind of funny sounding, but, um, and then it goes inside this pocket. So I really, really love this layout. I think it's maybe my favorite one I've done so far. I'm trying to think. I have my album here. I do really like the little cookie party one I did. I love the bar, cocktail bar one that I did. But otherwise, I really love the way this one turned out. I think it's super fun. I think it's also fun because it's a bit of a different color scheme that I've been doing. I've been doing a lot of red and green. So having this big splash of white and crisp kind of blue colors was really nice. Kind of like freshened up the album. So anyways, I am just working on getting all those together. And then I have all these pattern papers stacked up here. There's like from various different collections like crepe paper, six by eight paper pad, that's an Ellie Edwards, like, buffalo plaid card. And then there's some, another 6x8 pad, I think, by Simple Stories. But I have all those papers picked out to decide what I'm going to back each of these with. Because I at first thought that maybe I could put the photos back to back, but I wanted them to be more, like, center stage. So I end up using pattern paper on the back of each of them. And I really like the way that it turns out. So... I would love to know how you guys are doing in your December daily album if you are making one. I'm definitely at this interesting place where at this point all of my stories have happened. Like I've lived them all. It's January and I'm going back and just finishing up. And I spent a lot of time preparing for this album because I was super excited. So I made a lot of foundation pages and things like that. And what I'm finding is a lot of my foundation pages were really limiting in that it couldn't fit more than one photo or couldn't fit multiple photos. And I'm definitely a multiple photo scrapbooker just because I have a hard time just using one photo or just taking one photo. So that's kind of been a bit limiting. And I'm definitely still excited about the album. It's just, I think just because all of the photos have been taken, I'm less like, there's less anticipation that's exciting for me. It's more of like, I like the process, but getting started has been a little bit harder. So this page came out really, really great, and I really love it. I think I think I said this already, but I think it's my favorite one that I made so far. But I definitely still am feeling a little, like, uninspired maybe or something. So I would just love to know if you guys are feeling anything. 
if anything's helping you stay excited, stay motivated. I'm definitely super motivated to finish this album. Still, I want it to be finished. I think the other thing is that my album is so full, it's not enjoyable to flip through right now because I need to have the second album, um, but I haven't gotten it yet, so that's also maybe something. But anyways, what I'm doing right now is I've selected the backside images or pet papers or whatever. So for this one, I chose this little cut apart sheet from a six by eight pad. It's a three by four card and it just says happy winter. So I went with this, the theme I already have, which was like black, white, silver, and shades of blue. And then the other one is, do I use that one? I don't think I use that. That's an Allie Edwards card from I think the 2019 kit. Let me pull the album out actually. Hopefully this doesn't make too much background noise for you guys, but it always helps me to have the layout in front of me, but sometimes I forget that until I'm recording. So the second one, I, oh, I do use that card. I'm kind of surprised. It's kind of harsh. It's like a black star print that you see right there. It goes well though. I think I wanted to incorporate some black into the little layout, I guess. <laughs> And I'm just using more score tape to adhere those to the back like I was before. And I did jump ahead a little bit here because most of what I was doing was off screen, but I took just some white scratch paper and folded these little, I don't know, folds, chunks of paper. And that's how I'm going to get the flip element into this little layout. So I created these little strips of paper, folded them over, adhered them on the back side of each photo and then I would put the like background paper on top of it and you'll see like just like what I did there is how it's gonna work so I'm doing this all with score tape and just I think it's printer paper maybe or I don't know maybe I don't know it's white paper so anyways and honestly the thinner the paper would probably be better because it wouldn't add any extra bulk to it and then later on I cover up the side that goes onto the pattern star print paper with some washi tape just to cover it up but you could also could have used pattern paper for the fold so that when it shows it's like still attractive I guess but I did hide one side of the flap like you just saw there with the pattern paper that I'm backing each photo with so this is a three by or four by six card from an Ali Edwards I think the same 2019 kit it's like a white and gray buffalo plaid I really like it but I end up using that to be my journaling card which I think comes out really cute and I'm just looking around for something to do oh I was debating on whether or not I wanted to still use that black star card that I was talking about earlier. It's just kind of like a bold pattern compared to everything else, but I guess that adds some interest. And you can see on the top right, I did have some more like minty teal looking colors, but I decided to keep with this more cool gray tone that I was kind of doing. And then I'm going to arrange the flips onto the little backing card. So I put the bottom one as low down as it can go and then I put the top one as high up as it can go and then I put the middle one in the middle so pretty simple but the background paper I don't know if I talked about that I use that black and white star it's a kind of like a handwritten looking star print which is cute and it's sort of just sprinkled about and then I add the middle one in and I love the way this looked it's not super chunky like it's definitely got a little bit of bulk to it, but it's not crazy chunky. And if you didn't use the plastic frames, it would get it even thinner because the, the frames definitely added a bit of bulk. And then now I think I'm looking through my washi tape. Yeah, you can see I was pulling through my December daily collection and then I just opened my regular washi tape drawer and I found this metallic blue and gold printed washi. And I use that for all three just to kind of cover up the white paper is just kind of ugly so I just did that and then I'll trim all the excess off the back and I think that was just a really easy way to cover up the little mess and I do end up I don't know if I've, I haven't done it yet but the back side of it which is the plain it was single-sided paper oh right here so I end up taking another piece of the same star paper and backing it so that it's sort of like double-sided in theory I guess 
just so that because you do take it out of the pocket, I wanted to make sure that it was attractive on both sides, but I do leave it blank. I don't add anything to that star sided paper. I don't know what I could add. I guess I could have added journaling, but I already did that. You could have added like a full size photo if you wanted to do like a three by eight ish photo, but I put score tape on and now I'm peeling it all off, all the backing papers off. And then I will just attach that paper to it. I feel like overall this page came together pretty quickly. I think most of the work was done with the foundation page, which I think is the point of foundation pages. And mostly it's a pretty like simple, minimalistic layout. I, I don't know what to call it because it's not really a layout. It's not a spread. It's like a thing. But we'll just call it a layout for the sake of me being able to explain it. Um, and I'm just checking out and seeing what it looks like. But because it was really simple, sometimes I find those trickier because each embellishment or thing that you add makes a bigger impact when you're keeping things relatively simple. So I was trying to create a little bit of embellishing on each of the flaps, but I wanted to keep it simple and minimal. I didn't have a lot of space to work with. So it was a bit limiting in that way, but I think it's also just because I'm not a very minimalistic scrapbooker or anything or -er. I don't do anything very minimalistically so it was a bit tricky for me in that sense but I'm pulling out some little paper flags I think again from that 2019 Allie Edwards kit and then I have one of those canvas word strips from the 2021 collection that I love and am like unintentionally determined to use up so I add love this moment onto the top photo of us I kind of stood in the center of the skating rink taking a selfie my boyfriend is wearing this really funny hat he went to a hockey game with his housemate and basically went because they were giving out free hats to the people who got there like first or something and so I mean it's a nice hat it's just really funny because like he's not a hockey fan and I didn't even know that we had a local hockey team but he was really excited to wear his new hat. And yeah, so I did that. And then the next card or next flap, it's a photo of me like with my arms out skating. And I have a little Be Jolly flag that I'm attaching. And then I think I use, yeah, I use this little white oh, snowflake cute. confetti on the side of that. But what you're seeing now is actually me putting a circle, it's like a cardstock sticker. Again, from an mm -hmm. Ally Edwards 2019 kit. And it's a little snowflake, and I attach that to the bottom right of the bottom flip. And then I'll add those other embellishments on to the other tags. But as you can see here, this is what I mean by the minimalistic thing. Like, I didn't do too much to these, so I wanted to make sure everything looked balanced and looked cohesive. But also, like, it has to be intentional because it's limiting. Like, I don't get to just put anything anywhere. I mean, I guess I could have. It wasn't like there was a rule, but I decided to keep it simple and I wanted it to look good. So it was a little tricky, but it's, I guess, a good practice if you're a maximalist like me is to try doing a minimalistic spread or layout or whatever we're calling this every now and then so you can just kind of challenge yourself. But back to what is actually going on in front of you, I had added those two little gray word stickers, word phrase stickers, and it says time together. And now I'm going to add this little snowflake confetti that is from a random little confetti collection I have. I think it's like literally table confetti from some party that I have been hanging on to. So I'm adding that white snowflake just to that beside the be jolly little flag. And I think it is a cute little embellishment just to add a little something different but still keep it simple like I'm trying to do. And we're getting super close to the end here. I don't show my journaling on camera, but again, I add the journaling to the bottom of that Buffalo plaid card. And I also add another one of those canvas word strips that says spreading joy. And now I'm going to add on my number, which is 14 for story 14. And I'm going to use this little Tim Holtz number token, which I really love. And I had a little bit of a hard time trying to get this baker's twine through the token but I do get it through and loop some baker's twine on and then I just staple it right onto the spread and 
it comes out super cute. I think it's just a fun little addition. It brings that silver in from the foundation page, which has a bunch of silver on it. And it's just fun. It flips kind of like the rest of the page flips. I do stay both right through the photo, which goes through onto that card. And I thought about covering it, but it didn't really bother me. It's pretty subtle. It doesn't take away from the card on the back either. So I end up leaving it. But yeah, that is pretty much all that I do for this layout. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really love the way this one came out and I loved sharing it with you. So I will catch you in the next December daily process video. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.